I've been a Nintendo fan since the days of Game Boy, so I was very excited when I got the 3DS as well. Imagine my joy when I found out there was no AC adapter included, so I couldn't play anything until the holidays were over and the stores open again. I've had to improvise with this abomination so that I could kinda charge it. I'm sure we can all agree that including a charger that costs about a dollar to produce could very well bankrupt the company. Anyway, I went a step further and designed a fully functional charging dock. In this video, find out how it works and how easy it is to make one yourself. I'll begin by measuring the 3DS and then creating a sketch in Fusion 360. I don't care about the details, a simple box will do just fine. It's more important that the dimensions and button placements are correct. Next, the simple base around the 3DS. And don't forget to fill it all the corners. The most important part is the charger itself. The new 3DS has exposed charging contacts on the bottom. I went through a lot of different designs and ideas. The charger had to be very small to fit the contacts and I only wanted to use materials that most people can find around the house. In the end, I came up with this. There are two pins on top for holding the wires. The entire thing is then pushed upward with a spring, ensuring a good contact. And this is what the inside of the dock looks like. It's designed so that you can print everything without using any supports. As for the spring, find an old pen and take one from there. The slot has a slope so that the springs of different sizes can all fit inside. The holes are for standard jumper wires that you can find with any breadboard or Arduino kit, but they do have to be solid. If you don't have any wires like that, you can improvise with an LED or a resistor. First, insert the wire into the hole and bend it around the corner. Then flip it around and push the long end of the wire to the other side. Keep pushing it in and make sure the short end goes inside the hole as well. Use small pliers if you have to reshape it for a better fit. Looking at the top, the wires should create a curve like this. Pull the wire tightly and bend it into the channel. With that done, let's talk about the actual charging. Because this is Nintendo, the charging cable is basically a standard mini USB plug, but change just enough that it doesn't fit and you have to buy a dedicated one. You don't actually need the special plug, but you will need a USB cable that you're willing to cut. If you own any Apple device, this shouldn't be hard, as all of their cables look like this after 5 minutes of use. You only need red and black wires so you can cut away the others. Before we connect the wires, we have to talk about voltages as well. 3DS charges at 4.6, while the standard voltage for USB is 5 volts. So, what can you do? Well, you can do nothing and simply use 5 volts for charging. Devices like the 3DS are designed with a safety margin. In fact, every 3DS cable that you can buy has a standard USB plug and therefore charges at 5 volts. Having said that, you can lower the voltage down if you want to complicate things. You might think it's ok to simply attach a resistor, but that won't work because the charging load isn't constant. Better option is to use either a buck converter or a low dropout regulator. The issue with buck converters is that most aren't capable of achieving such a small voltage difference, also known as dropout voltage. For example, a cheap one like this can only go up to 4.5 volts, and that's already pushing it. Low dropout regulators don't suffer from this issue, but they can produce a lot of heat. Quick calculations for a typical LDO are showing around 55 degrees Celsius, which is getting very close to what PLA can handle. You should definitely keep it out of contact with the surface or use a heat sink. But like I've said, you really shouldn't bother and just use the standard 5 volts. You 
you'll find a small chamber on the bottom where you can tuck everything inside. You might be wondering, what's this doing at the front? Well, as a bonus, I've designed a set of swappable plates. For best effect, you should print them in multiple colors. Don't worry, you can do this with any printer because you'll simply be changing filament at certain heights. You'll find full instructions in the description if you've never done this before. It's easy and very useful in all sorts of cases. If you want to make your own design or learn more about the process, I've already made a separate video on how to create models and change colors. Of course, I'm including a blank plate as well to make it easier to design new ones. Be sure to share them with others. Until next time, happy printing!